All right, here's a quick tutorial on normal probability plots. Uh, the idea with normal probability plots is they're plots, they're pictures, that help you determine whether data came from something whose shape was normal. Right? And that ends up being really important, that assumption of normality. Typically, when you learn this in a statistics class, it's right after you did some stuff with normal CDF and inverse norm, or the empirical rule, or one of those type questions where it tells you in the problem, assume fill in the blank, IQ, or whatever we're talking about, is approximately normal. Because if you have this assumption of normality, you can calculate all sorts of stuff, which is what inverse norm and normal CDF does. But how did they, they being whoever was asking you this question, know that the data has this normal shape? How'd you know that? What if like a more realistic scenario is you're studying something and you collected a bunch of data, here's 16 observations of something that I'm studying, and I'd like to be able to draw conclusions using normal CDF or inverse norm, but I can only do that with this assumption of normality. How do I know if this data came from a distribution that's approximately normal? Well, one way is you can make a histogram and kind of look at it and be like, does it look like it's kind of normal enough? Uh, but maybe a more powerful method of doing that is what's called a normal probability plot. So what I want to do in this example is I want to take this data, these 16 observations. And if you want, you can make up a story for these. I think I had a story. This was uh, the number of college level math classes that 16 different people had taken in their college career, right? So this person just took one college level math class because you had to check the quantitative reasoning box and didn't like math, didn't do any more. Whereas these people, maybe they're like math majors and they took a bunch. Maybe this person got a PhD in math or something and took 40 classes. It's a stupid story, but whatever, play along. You got 16 observations is essentially you want to know, did this data come from a population that's approximately normal? To answer that question, we make a normal probability plot. What I want to do is show you how to make a normal probability plot on a calculator. So what you do, it's kind of a three-step process. Step one, not surprisingly, is you're going to enter your data. I guess I can write that. Step one, enter data. If you need help on entering data, well, maybe that's a topic for a different video. Uh, you hit stat, and then you go into edit, and you can type in these observations. And I went ahead and already did that, so you don't have to watch me type these in. I put mine into L1. You can put yours wherever you want. Just keep track of what list it's in. Step two is program your normal probability plot. For the sake of brevity, I'll call it an NPP for normal probability plot, because why not? Um, so you got to tell your calculator you want a normal probability plot. Normal probability plots live where the rest of your statistical plots live conveniently under the stat plot menu. So you hit second and then y equals to get into the stat plot menu. You go into the first one here. Uh, make sure it's on. Make sure the other two are off. Then you go down and select which type you want. Uh, so in our class so far we've looked at this, these histograms here, this third type, and this fourth type, these box plots. One we have not yet looked at is this sixth type. This sixth type is a normal probability plot, which you'll see is this is kind of what a normal probability plot looks like. So you select that. When you select that, it's going to ask you some questions. First off, where's your data, right? You can't make a normal probability plot on data if you don't specify where the data is. Mine's an L1. And then it asks you what axis do you want your data on? So where do you want your actual observations? It doesn't really matter. I'm going to tell you to always put it on the X axis, but that's not like some set standard. You can do whatever you want. The actual observations will go on one of your axes, and the kind of expected would go on the other axis. So I'm going to select X here, and that's what we'll always do in our class, is put the actual value observations on the X axis. And then it asks you what mark you want. I don't know why it asks you that. Um, we'll choose whatever you want. It doesn't make a difference. It's just going to change how it shows up in your picture. Uh, so now I've told my calculator I program my normal probability plot. My third step is to set the window accordingly. Um, maybe I'll just say zoom. Uh, so you can set the window if you want, but you don't have to manually set the window when you're doing these problems. You can instead just zoom. Your calculator is a feature that will zoom appropriately. Before you hit this zoom key, make sure your cursor is just flashing like a normal cursor, not flashing with the alpha lock on. If it is, got to turn off that alpha lock so it just looks like a normal cursor. Then hit this zoom key. And this zoom key gives you lots of options for zooming in. The ninth one on this list will say zoom stat. So scroll down to it or just press the number nine, doesn't matter. And it'll zoom for you, and it'll create a normal probability plot. Voila, there's my normal pro probability plot. Um, I suppose you need to know what this means. So what we have here with our normal probability plot is you got to be able to think about each of these little boxes in terms of their x value, how far left and right it is, and their y value, how far up and down it is. So I can use the trace key to jump from one observation to another. 
Maybe I'll just pick one here. Uh, I don't know. Here's one. X equals 5. Looking at this observation here. In my normal probability plot, that shows up right here. So the idea is it's x coordinate 5 is the actual value. Because remember in the last screen, it asked me where I want my data, and I said I want it on the x-axis. So it puts the actual values on the x-axis. So maybe I'll draw, I'll write like actual or something over here. And then you can put in a scale, 0, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, good enough. Maybe I'll label a few of these. Just to give some context to my picture, fine. And then there's also a y-axis. Not great, but good enough. It's hard to draw straight lines on a computer. Um, and it's not the actual, it's kind of the expected. And really, I should say expected if the data is perfectly normal. So what I'm saying is this observation right here, this 5, this is its actual value is 5. Its expected value in some sense was 0.402. And to be clear, the value itself is not 0 0.402. The z-score of the observation is 0 0.402. So what that means is this 5, I expected that to be 0.4 standard deviations above the mean. Okay, don't get too caught up into the technicalities. All that's going on here is expected is on the y-axis and actual is on the x-axis. And if actual and expected line up really well, what will end up happening is I'm going to get a straight line. If actual and expected don't line up very well, then I'm going to get some big curve like I have here. So when you're looking at your normal probability plot, you just ask yourself the question, is data maybe approximately linear? Meaning, when you look at your normal probability plot, does it do the dots fall more or less in a straight line? Or do they have some crazy curve like this one here does? I don't even want to draw these on here because I'm not doing it accurately enough to really have it reflective of my graph, but whatever. Maybe it looks more or less like this. Do it a little bit more carefully on a test. You don't have to put a scale on the y-axis if you don't want, you can. Uh, the idea is, is your data approximately linear? Yes, that means that data came from a population. That is approximately normal. I don't know why approximately was capitalized. It's not supposed to be. Um, because if actual and expected are more or less the same, it ends up making these dots show up in a straight line. And if that doesn't happen, if the data is not approximately linear, no, then uh, it's not approximately normal. And when I say it, I mean the population from which this data came. So in this case, I look at this and I ask you the question, do these guys look like they fall in a straight line? You're like, no, not even close. This is a big curve right here. Okay, well that tells me these observations probably didn't come from a population that's approximately normal. And you're like, yeah, obviously. I mean, think about what a histogram would look like. All these observations are clustered over here on the left with this big long tail out to the right. This data would very much be right skewed, not approximately normal, which is why the normal probability plot didn't come back linear. All right, so the idea with the normal probability plot is you just look at your dots, and if they fall in a straight line, you can conclude that the data came from a population that's approximately normal. So what's wrong with this? Well, does it fall in a straight line is somewhat subjective, right? I mean, is this a straight line? No, but that's because I contrived this problem to get data that was super duper skewed to the right. Like in a more realistic context, it might be hard to tell if something falls in a straight line or not. So typically what happens when you have normal probability plots is you'll see bands for you. So maybe there's a band that kind of looks like this and another band that kind of looks like this. And I guess I should continue these a little bit. And I didn't do a very good job of drawing these. I want to do it again. Yeah, maybe that would be a little more realistic. Maybe my bands would look like this. Uh, the bad news is these TI calculators, they can't make these bands for you, which is a bummer. If you get a more powerful statistical system, it'll, improve, it'll include these red bands right here. If you have the red bands, the question of is the data approximately linear can be restated as do all observations fall within the bands? If the answer is yes, then your data is approximately linear, so the data came from a population that's approximately normal. 
If the answer is no, like it is here, here's an observation that's not in between the bands. There's a few in here that aren't between the bands. There's one there, there's a bunch that aren't between the bands. Why are there dots that made their way out of these bands? Because they don't line up in a straight line. Right? If the dots were in a straight line, more or less, they'd all be inside of these bands. Your question is probably, how do you create the bands? You don't, which is a bummer, at least not in our class. So what can happen in our class is I can ask you to make the normal probability plot, and then you answer this question subjectively. Do the dots look like they're in a straight line or not? And I, because I'm a nice teacher, am either going to make them super duper linear or super duper not linear. But in a more realistic context, what would probably happen is you'd use software that's a little bit more powerful that would be able to calculate these bands for you. Uh, to give you a couple more examples, what I did is I went online. I didn't do a whole lot of research. I did a Google image search and I found some normal probability plots. So here's one. Here's a normal probability plot from some software that's a little bit more advanced than what you have in your class. And note the bands, right? What the conclusion here would be is these red dots are approximately linear. And like they don't fall in a perfectly straight line. They kind of snake around a little bit. Yeah, it's true, but it's close enough. And you're like, how would I know it's close enough? Well, because the bands are provided here. What if the bands weren't provided here? Then it would be the subjective question of, do these red dots fall in a straight line? A comment here, the actual data is on the x-axis and the expected values are on the y-axis, which is the same thing that we did up here. They're following that same idea. But as I mentioned, not everybody does this. Here's another one where I have a whole bunch of observations. And you gotta ask yourself the question, do these observations fall more or less in a straight line? Downside here is I don't have bands. This would be a tough question to answer. I would probably say, yeah, close enough. It's approximately normal. But I feel a lot better in that conclusion if bands were included. Comment here, it looks like the actual data values are on the y-axis and the expected ones are on the x-axis here. So they have this picture kind of flipped, but it really doesn't matter because regardless of whether your actual is down here and your expected is up here or your actual is up here and your expected is down here, either way, if those things match up, you're going to end up with data in a straight line. If those things don't match up, you get an example like you see here. So the big takeaways from normal probability plots is twofold. First off, I want you to be able to, if I give you data, draw this picture without the red bands in here. And I want you to be able to look at this picture without the red bands in here and ask yourself this question in blue. Is the data approximately linear? And I want you to know that if your answer is yes, then that tells you that the data came from a population that's approximately normal. And if the answer is no, that means the data came from a population that's not approximately normal. So I would like you to be able to draw these things. I would like you to be able to look at them and come to the right conclusion, this yes or no. And then I'd also like you to know that our calculator isn't really that advanced as far as a statistical software goes. And then if you're using any statistical program that's meaningful, you'd be able to put in a uh, level of confidence and it would build these bands for you and you'd feel a lot better about your conclusion. And I think if you know those things, you know everything that I need you to know about normal probability plots. So I'm going to end this video here. Hope that makes some sense to people and I'll see y'all on Wednesday.